Hey guys, welcome back to another Arc Dev Kit tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at water. So we're going to start to go over that and we're going to make an ocean for this little island that we were working on last time and then make sure it's got the correct physics and post-processing in it too. But before we get onto that, I just need to correct something from my last video. So when you click on your landscape, you get your settings come up and you need to make sure that your collision preset is set to ground. I believe in my last video I told you to set to block all, but if you do that, it's not recognised as ground in game and you can't place any structures on it. And obviously that's, pre that's a pretty vital part of Ark, so without that the game's pretty much ruined. But as long as your collision preset is set to ground, you should be alright. So now we're going to move on to making our water. The first thing we need to do is we need to get the mesh, which is what you'll see when you look at the water in game and you'll see obviously the top of the water and the slight waves and we need to create that before anything else. You want to go up to your place tool and search for BP underscore island and then here it is BP underscore island water plane. Now if you can't find this file you have to go to file open and open the island level. Once that's loaded it could take a little while because obviously it has to load up everything from the island map you can just leave that open for a second, then go back to this project, and this file will be there now. And it's just the way the dev kit sorts through its files, you have to open that for some reason first. So, we're now just going to drag and drop that onto our map, and you can see there, the water's starting to appear. So I'm going to drag that there, and there we go. Lower it down a little bit, and you can now see, if we hit play, there is water covering the outside of our map. There we go. Now let's move on to the other parts of the water. So, the first part, or the second part, sorry, of creating water, is you need the physics volume. To do that, we can go up to our place tool and just search for physics volume. There we go. And we're going to drag that in as well. We need to scale this with the brush tool over here. And we're going to set it for this map. It may be bigger for yours, it may be smaller, depending on what you're making. I'm going to set mine to 30,000 by 30,000 and then with a depth of 4,000. Now this is going to be your entire swimmable area so if you want to be able to swim somewhere you're going to need this to cover it. So obviously this is a lot bigger than my map as it's just for the tutorial really so it doesn't matter too much. So you just need to get this in position which can be a little bit tedious, but you basically just have to line it up with the top of the water. That'll do for now. So we're gonna, now going to set up the settings for this. You need to check this box that says water volume, and then physics on contact, and we're going to set the water density to 0 0.8, and then the fluid friction to 0 0.8 as well. So now we've done that, if we click play, you can actually see that we should be able to swim in this water. There we go. And you can see that down in the lower right hand corner we have an oxygen bar, and the game thinks that we are underwater. So, obviously there's no effects under here yet, so that's going to be the next thing we do. We're going to work on a post-processing volume to simulate the underwater and give the bluish look. So to do the post-processing, we're just going to go up to our place tool again and search for post-process. There we go, post-process volume. We're going to drag that in and we're going to set that to the same size as our physics volume. So 30,000 by 30,000 by 4,000. Now we need to try and line these up so they are in the same position and at the same height. Once again, it can be a little tedious, but once you've got them in the same place, you can link them together so that they move at the same time. So you won't have to do this a second time if you decide to move the water. There we go, so that'll do for now. And then we're going to go up to our post-processing volume, we're going to right click on it and then go down to attach to and we're going to attach it to our physics volume. So now that means that whenever we move our physics volume, the post-processing will go with it too and it just makes moving everything a bit easier. Now we've done that, 
the next step before we can get onto setting up our post processing is to move our entire level down. Now, the reason for this is that when you add the some of the effects to the post processing, if you are at the level that we're at currently, then it won't look right and you'll basically end up just it being black or blue underwater with no effects and you'll just have solid colours. So, we're going to select our landscape first and we're going to set the location on the Z to minus 15,000. And there we go, you can see that's gone down there now. So then we're going to select our island water plane. We're going to set the location to minus 15,000. Then we're going to select our dirt plane. And that's going to go to minus 18,000. So it's still lower than our landscape. So minus 18,000. And then we are going to drag down this volume as well. And we can reposition that in a minute. We can drag down the light source a little bit, but that's not too necessary. Just so it's all the same level we need to get to it. And that should do for now. So now we can go down. Bring the light source up. And we can select our physics volume. So now we need to get that back in the right place. So to do that, drag it up. And try and get it level with the top of the water. I'll speed this bit up because it can be a bit tedious but then hopefully at the end of it it should all work fine. So now we have our physics volume in place and I'm also of course just going to bring our start point down because I forgot about that and that will be very painful if you try and play your map and your start point is all the way up there. So we're just going to bring that down so that we're actually starting in our map and not up in the sky. So now we can get on to setting up our post-processing volume and making it look right. There's quite a few lengthy settings for this, but I'll put them all up on screen so you can put in the right values and I'll just walk through it slowly. First of all, we're going to scroll down from the brush settings and we're going to turn on fringe and vignette. So we're going to set the fringe to around 3 and the vignette to around 0.85. I found that looks the nicest and most accurate towards the game. Then we're going to scroll all the way down to depth of field. And we're going to tick these boxes. Apart from this one here, the max size. Then we're going to set the method to Gaussian. The focal distance to minus 2500. The focal region to zero, the near transition to zero, far transition to 40,000, and then the scale to one. Then we have the near blur size, which is going to be zero, and the far blur size, which is going to be one. So now we've done that, you'll be able to see if we go down under the water, there is an effect on the camera. You see it is starting to look a bit more like the ocean in Ark. But then as soon as we go out of this box, it's back to normal again. The last few things left to do is we have to go to the blendables. And we're going to add two new elements. In, and we're going to set the first one to pp underscore underwater extinction instance. There we go. And then the second one. It's going to be set to pp underscore water screen distortion instance. So now we've done those two, if we go under the water, you should see there's the bluey and wavy effect over there. Now, this is the effect that will mess up if you have your landscape set too high. So if you have your landscape set at the original height that it comes in, you will, as soon as you go under the water, your entire screen will go blue or the entire screen will go black. And obviously, you can't work with that. So once you do that fix and move the landscape and everything in your map all the way down, you should all be okay. So now we're going to hit play and see how it works and whether we need to adjust the height of the physics and post process or whether it worked okay. Let's run down to the water 
and we will see how it looks. So as you can see, this now looks very accurate to the water in Ark. You've got the blurry effects and the waving in front of the camera. And then you'll be also be able to see as we go up to the top, there is the effect of water on the camera lens. If we take a look in third person now, you can see that we are actually swimming too high. So that means that we need to move the physics volume down. We just need to select our physics volume and we're going to move it down ever so slightly. Hit play. And we are still slightly too high there. So move it down a tiny bit more. Play. Now, this is a very tedious progress, but you only have to do it once. You know, when you want to make a lake, you can just dip the landscape slightly. And as you can see here, it does fill up with water. So as long as you set the level for this right, you should only have to really do it once. There we go. So that's at the right level now, and if we swim on top of the surface, you can see that we are actually swimming. That pretty much covers everything there is to do with making this first ocean in Ark. If you have any questions, of course, drop them in the comments below, or any requests for something in particular you'd like to see. I'm happy to do them. Other than that, I hope you found this video useful, and of course, I'll see you in the next one.